your engagement. Fellow Toastmasters, guests, please join me and welcome in distinguished Toastmaster, Kim Beckett. Thank you, Derek. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Are we gonna go with the music first? Go ahead. World, I want to leave you better. I want my life to matter. I am afraid I have no purpose here. I watch the news on TV, abandon myself daily. I am afraid to let you see our me when it falls, when it falls. Pardon me the rain it falls, when it falls. So in the seeds of love and hope, love and love, we don't have to stay. Stuck in the weeds
thank you so much for that. Welcome everyone, dignitaries, fellow Toastmasters, and most welcome guests. I am delighted to be here with you today. Thank you, Derek, for that wonderful introduction, and thank you, Andre, for that motivating song. I'd like to share my screen, so I think you actually have to stop sharing yours so that I can do that. There we go. Perfect. Little delay there. Just a second. Okay, somebody give me a thumbs up and tell me if you can see my screen. Thumbs up. That was quick. Thank you. Appreciate that. I'm dealing with three monitors, so if you see me looking away, I do apologize for that, but I, that's how I typically work, and it gets a little challenging. My first question for you tonight is, are you fully leveraging LinkedIn to expand your professional network? to grow your business, or maybe even to find that next level job opportunity? Do you know the latest tips and tricks for LinkedIn? And how do you stay current on those best features? During our limited time together tonight, I'm going to answer those questions along with a few more and give you some actionable tips, strategies, and resources that will help you more fully leverage LinkedIn. I've created a handout that you can follow along with what I'm going to be covering tonight. And there's also some fill in the blanks to keep you engaged along the way. So please scroll back up in the chat. You will see a link to a PDF. You can actually click on that. Your device will open the PDF and then you can download that to your computer if you'd like. So let's get started. This is what your handout looks like. So feel free to download that so that you can follow along. If you notice, I put a lot of the answers in here for you because I don't want you to have to spend a lot of your time writing. I want you to spend more of your time thinking about your profile and how you can leverage it more fully. Let's start off by talking about why LinkedIn? What's the big deal? I think we all know that LinkedIn is the number one social network for business professionals. And that's really what sets it apart from the other social media platforms. In your handout, you can fill in the first blank there. Did you know that two members join LinkedIn every second? Every second, think about that. Also, in the US, there's over 170 million members of LinkedIn. And you can't have more than one LinkedIn profile, so that truly is 174 million people that we have access to. And if you look at it worldwide, it's 772 million users. And if you're in sales, LinkedIn, 50% of business-to-business -business web traffic actually comes from LinkedIn. And by the way, the survey there was a survey recently done that said LinkedIn was 277% more effective at generating leads than Facebook or Twitter. Lots of folks have been advertising and been working through Facebook and thinking it was fabulous. And there's nothing wrong with that, but don't misunderstand the value of LinkedIn for sales. Our objectives for today, First of all, we're gonna talk about what's the best way for you to optimize your LinkedIn profile. We all created one at some point, but when was the last time you really took a hard look at it and said, how can I leverage this more fully? I'm gonna give you some tips. Number two, we'll talk about ways to grow your connections and make sure that you have connections with the people you need to have connections with. And then number three, how do you post content? What, not the technical part of it, that's boring. We can figure that out with LinkedIn help. But what do I post and when and how often? We'll answer those questions. And then finally, how do I make it a habit so that I can fully leverage LinkedIn to either grow my business or make sure that I can get my next job opportunity? Now, it looks like someone's saying they can't find the PDF. Um, here is the link. So I'm going to send that again. We tested it at the beginning. It's in the, it's in the cloud with Adobe. 
So if you don't have Adobe Reader, that could be your issue there. Um, and I will be happy to send it out afterwards. Um, we, can, we can maybe post it on the Facebook page for the district or something like that so that you have it. Let's start off talking about optimizing your profile. What do I mean by that? The very first thing that you want to do on your profile is have a good LinkedIn photo. This is a professional network, so you want to have a professional photo. Take a look at these six photos, and now what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to use your stamp tool, which is located at the top of your screen. You should have a little black bar at the top. If you click on more, then you can click on annotate, and then click on this stamp tool. And then you can choose the check mark, you can choose the star, the heart, whatever you like. So once you find that, go ahead and just stamp all over this slide here for me. If you've never done that, it takes a moment to do it. And while we're playing around with that, if you don't have Adobe Reader, it's free. You can actually download Adobe Reader while we're on the call as well, if you're into multitasking. Perfect. Lots of you have figured out how to use the annotation tool. Now, I am I'm the queen of the kingdom, so that means that I can clear those annotations. So I'm going to clear all your drawings so that we can go to the next slide. So hang on just a minute. Don't draw. Hang on. I know it's tough. Let's go to the next one. On the next slide, take a look at these. Now, use your check mark or your star and tell me which photos you think are the best photos for LinkedIn. And these are actual photos. These were people that I, that I pulled up last week on LinkedIn. So it looks like a lot of people like number two. We got some number threes. We've also got an X on number three. There's, I'll give you a hint. There's two of them that I, in my professional opinion, feel like are the best photos of all. Okay, so let's talk about this. Number one, I don't know where this guy is. I don't think it's a nightclub. It looks like he maybe just got through doing a professional gig of some sort. Maybe that's a stage in the background. He's not centered in the picture. He is looking at the camera, so that's good, but the lighting's not good. He's a handsome guy, so he could have come up with a better photo there. Number two, you're absolutely right. Look at that photo. It's clear, it's crisp, it's professional. He's not wearing a tie, which is great. He looks even more approachable that way. So you don't have to really be stuffy in doing this, but you do want to make sure it is a good photograph. And that is one that looks like it was taken by a professional photographer. Now, number three is a tough one. And some of you put check marks on that one. And one of you put a big X on it. Number three it looks like he had someone take that professionally. That's one of those branding photos where you have a photographer come in and do the branding. But the problem with this photo, in my opinion, and based on the research that I've done, is that he's looking away from the camera. We want your eyes. We want to see your eyes in order to build trust and build trusting relationships. So keep that in mind. Number four is a no-go, it's blurry. I have no idea what that is behind him. Believe me, I've spent way too much time trying to figure out what that is behind him, but I don't know. Number four, what it was a professional photo, but it's blurry. So she's just uploaded something that doesn't have the right amount of pixels in order for that to be clear on LinkedIn. So just remember when you upload your photo to go back and take a look at it, just like someone else would to see if it's clear. And then number six is the second one that I think is very good. This is a professional headshot as well. She's looking right at us. She's smiling. She looks approachable. She's a top producer out in California in the mortgage business. So those are all examples of LinkedIn photos that you see. And by the way, you get 14 times more views if you have a photo. So if you're on LinkedIn and you don't have a photo, that's one of the first things that you're going to want to do. Yeah. Oh. All right, so the next thing we wanna talk about is how important it is in optimizing your profile to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna clear the drawings again. We're not drawing right now. How important it is to use keywords. 
and key words, think of it this way. The words that people use when they're searching for you and your services. You notice that Derek said in my bio, maybe you remember, uh, that I do DISC sales training. DISC is a personality assessment. So I wanted to make sure that I had those words in my DISC, in, in my LinkedIn profile so people that were looking for someone that was a DISC certified facilitator could find me. And guess what? It worked. I got some business from that as a result of putting that in my profile after I attended a class on LinkedIn. So you want to make sure you have those keywords in there. And I'm going to show you where you're going to put those keywords. There's four places, the headline, the about summary section, your current and past work experience, and the featured section. You guys love to draw. I love it. All right. I'm trying to clear those drawings. There we go. All right. So let's talk about the headline. This is my headline. If you don't change your headline, what happens is LinkedIn automatically defaults to whatever your current job title is. Boring, that is your newsworthy headline that gets people to pay more attention to you. What do you do that other people need to know about? So I help sales professionals and leaders maximize their relationships and close more business. And then what are some of those search words? Certified Everything Disc Facilitator. That's a certain thing that people would search for. Sales Call Reluctant Expert. So those are some examples of he a headline that, could, that would work. And if you notice, there's lines in between each of those things in my headline. Those are called pipes. And that's on your keyboard. If you use the shift key, it's right above the inner key, the backslash. And then with the shift key, it's the pipe. Now, the next one that I'm going to show you the headline is the guru of LinkedIn and my LinkedIn training, in my opinion, and her name is Bryn Tillman, and I'm going to tell you more about Bryn later, but I wanted to show some examples of what a true, true expert does. So look at her picture. She's staring right at us. It's very clear, friendly, approachable, and her headline says, transforming the way professionals grow their business by leveraging LinkedIn to convert content and connection to conversations. And then she's got that little talking bubble. So she's got some symbols in there. She does instructor-led training, e-learning, and group coaching. So that is a perfect example. And look how great her background banner looks as well. So that's headline. So that may be something that you need to work on in yours. Now, one of the things that I learned when I went to LinkedIn training back in uh, the fall of 2019, when I redid my LinkedIn profile, is to use these keywords in those different sections. And the way that you do it is when you do your about summary, think about that as if you're talking to the person you're either selling yourself to or you're selling your services to. And at the very end of your about summary, that's where you wanna put in those keywords and you just call it specialties. What are some of the things you specialize in? You don't have to call it keywords. So that's my, my example. Let's look at Bren's. Now Bren believes, and I think this is so uh, true, and again, this just was something I learned in working on this presentation, is she believes instead of telling people how great you are, show them how great you are by giving them something. And Bryn gives away a ton of stuff. So I'm a huge fan of hers because of that. So in her about summary, she's even said, here are some core LinkedIn strategies that you can use now. And her number one tagline is number one there, which is convert your LinkedIn profile from a resume to a resource. If you're not in the job market right now, you can convert that right over. You can say so much more about yourself by being a resource to other people and providing valuable information and insights than just saying, hey, here's who I am and what I've done in my lifetime. You know, that, that's more of a resume type thing. And that's how we all started with LinkedIn. So she's got some really interesting concepts around how to really bring your profile to life. In the experience section, this is that, this is mine again. This is that same specialties keyword thing. I just copied and pasted it and put it in there. Now, when you're building out these sections of your LinkedIn profile, I recommend that you do it in a Word document and then you copy and paste it into LinkedIn because you're going to have more formatting options to do it that way versus just trying to do it straight into LinkedIn. 
All right, so this is a section that's pretty cool, and this is what Bren calls the scroll stopper, and it's the featured section. So after someone has scrolled past the about summary, then there's a section where you can add pictures, which pictures make everybody stop, right? PDFs, infographics, articles, things like that. That's what's going to make someone stop and say, oh, what else is there? So this is an example of some of the things that I have listed in mine. I'm not saying they're the greatest. I need to update this, but that's what I have for now. So this shows that, hey, I'm teaching a class, and these are some of the real estate agents that were in my class. And then let's see what Bryn's is. You know, Bryn does a lot on social media. So she's got some of the posts that she's posted in social media, and she has those listed there. So I love those because, again, it's dynamic, it's different colors. I mean, my pictures are too, but you know, try to think about ways to really get people to engage and go, whoa, wait a minute, what is that? Let me take a look at that. And that's what she calls the scroll stopper, which I think is a, a brilliant way to put it. That's the featured section. Now here's a tip, and this is a big one. Don't forget this. Before you make any changes to your profile, you want to update your privacy settings so that your network or connections don't see every single change that you're making and go, wow, what's going on? So LinkedIn's changed it where your connections don't see every change, but they'll see quite a few if you go in and make all the changes. So the, only, the way that you can avoid that is you go, you uh, click on your avatar at the top where it says me, and then you click on settings and privacy, scroll down to visibility of your LinkedIn activity. And then this will pop up, this will be listed there and it'll say share profile updates with your, with your network. So should we notify your network when your profile is updated or upon anniver work anniversaries? Just change it to no, toggle that to no while you're making the updates. And then just remember to go back in and change that um, after you're finished with all of your updates. Very important. Now, you know how to use your stamp tool, so I, I know you know how to do that. Give me, give me a heart, show me some love on the screen. There we go. Nice. Ooh, and they're all red. That's lovely. <laughs> I feel so loved and honored. Thank you. <laughs> love it, love it like Valentine's Day in here. All right, so optimize your profile with keywords. Now, I'm gonna clear the uh, stamps, use your heart or your check, whatever you wanna use, and click on, click beside the sections of your profile that you feel like you need to work on. Which parts of your profile need the most work? Perfect. All right. Well, now you have a good idea of what you need to do. Let's go to the next screen. To optimize your profile, it can get a little overwhelming. And my recommendation is just like the advice of how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time, you need to do the same thing with optimizing your profile. And I call that the chunk it down challenge. Update one section of your profile a day until it's complete. So maybe you just tackle the headline and you may think, well, Kim, that doesn't take that much time. Trust me, it can if you really put some keyword and thought behind it. So it may take you a week to, to go through it and do it, but then you'll have it done and you'll have it done the way that you want. So I'd recommend that you do that. And I love the hearts on the elephant. That's very cute. I'm going to leave those there for a moment. All right, let's move on. So, oh, before we move on, um, give me a, uh, tell me with the arrow, because the arrow will give me your name, if you are going to take the Chunk It Down Challenge and update one section of your profile a day until you feel like it's complete. Perfect. Look at that. It may seem a little daunting, but you can get it done if you just break it into chunks and work on it a little bit each day. All right, thank you for that. Let's keep moving because I've got about 10 minutes left. Grow your connections. When, grow, when you're growing your connections, you have to think about who are my current connections? Well, first of all, are you connected with all your coworkers? What about the vendors in your office, now that it's virtual, of course, 
But what about the people that, that you work with that are your suppliers? Um, those people know a lot of people. You need to, to be in their network. Just, just like with Toastmasters, we're an association. Do you, are you connected with your Toastmasters? What about your community leaders? Are you part of the Chamber of Commerce or Kiwanis? Or, um, do you know some of the city commissioners? So are you connected with those types of people? And certainly your current and per past clients and your current prospects. So make sure that you have those connections up to date. And then here's something that I learned last year that just, no, yeah, it was the beginning of last year, right after COVID hit, that just kind of blew my mind. I attended one of the Bryn Tillman webinars and it was a free 90 minute web webinar. It was amazing. I had no idea that you could export your contacts from LinkedIn into an Excel spreadsheet. And then you could kind of sort from there, do them A, B, C, D, figure out which ones you really wanted to start connecting with because it's hard to really look at it all on LinkedIn. You can, but it's hard to get it organized. So if that's something that speaks to you, when I heard that, like I said, mind blown, but it also was something that I knew that I could wrap my arms around and do something with. Google, just search for it in LinkedIn help and it will give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to do the export. It takes about, uh, the steps take about a minute and then it takes LinkedIn about 10 minutes to get you the information. Once you do that, then you can say, okay, well, here's my list of all my contacts and here's all my A-level contacts that I really should be staying in touch with more. Decide how you wanna stay in touch with them. So with, with um, LinkedIn, you know, there's different ways you can do that, but you know, do you need to do a hello or a check-in or a catch up with them? Or maybe you need to schedule a phone call. Um, from the app, you can do a video message. That's something that you can do. Maybe you wanna introduce your connection to someone else, or you haven't liked or shared or commented on any of their content recently. But you can also do some of these other things, which are endorse, give kudos, and recommendations. So let's keep going on that. Let me show you those real quick. So you can endorse someone for a skill and they will get a little note that says that and, and that way you're engaging them uh, and they'll usually respond back and say thank you for that. You can also give kudos and, and that's something that's a little different. So when you're in your LinkedIn at the top upper right, if you click on more, you can click on give kudos in the same place where recommendation is and you can just give them some give them some kudos. Thank you so much for you know taking the time to meet with me by phone the other day to walk me through X, Y, and Z. You're awesome. And who doesn't like to get kudos? Writing a recommendation. Write a recommendation for one of your um, one of your colleagues. You know, if you really enjoy working with that person, this lady here, uh, I. I I think she's fabulous. She's a great real estate agent in the area. She and I have worked together for the last three years. We've been in leads groups and we work together with, at the Delray Beach Chamber of Commerce um, on several things. So, you know, I, I wanted to recommend her and she appreciated that very much. Then ask for a recommendation. So when I did some training for I Think Financial last year, I, I asked Brad, who was the manager who hired me for his team, hey, would you mind writing a recommendation? And then the lady at the bottom, this was someone that used to work for me. Since I do sales and leadership training, it's nice to have recommendations from someone that can say, hey, you know, Kim's legit. She's a decent leader. She, she knows what she's doing. So you, know, you can give a recommendation. You can ask for a recommendation. The next part of growing your connection is accepting connection requests. You will get a lot of connection requests and you won't necessarily connect with all of them. You wanna review their profile first to see if there's any synergy and how they might add value to you and your network. Sometimes I know that if I connect with someone, I'm just, eh, you know, I know, what, I know what's coming next and I'll explain that in just a second. When you're sending connection requests, don't just do the standard send, include a personalized message. Um, hi, Austin, I enjoyed meeting you at the TLI last week. Let's connect to expand our networks. So he has an idea of, oh yeah, I did meet Kim and yeah, we should do that. So it's more likely that he's going to connect with me because of that. And then you wanna acknowledge every new connection. Thanks for connecting with me. 
So that's something that you can do as well. Growing your connections. What do you think the, give me a, an answer in chat. What do you think the number one mistake people make is when they uh, do connections in LinkedIn? What would you say the number one mistake is that they make with connections? When they first connect with somebody. That's right, Dr. Sev. They're immediately asking for something. And we call that the connect and pitch. Don't be that person. Nobody likes that person. And a lot of times I will just disconnect from that person because that's not what you would do if you saw that person in a live setting. You don't have enough of a relationship or trust to automatically pitch that person. People do it all the time. So don't be that person because it does, it's very off-putting. And I don't think you would disagree with me on that. So let's talk quickly about posting valuable content. Right. Okay, thank you. So posting valuable content, you want to position yourself as an expert. How are you an expert? You have core genius. You know things that people come to you and ask questions about, your customers ask you about all over, uh, all the time. So you can post how-tos, lists, images, videos. Those are some examples of things that you could post and share. Just tips. Here's a variety, and I've got a, a typo in there, I apologize. Uh, for the types of content that you could post. So even a photo from an event. Uh, I love infographics, so that's why I put that one first. I also like inspiring quotes. So I've got all this in your handout, but think about what are some of the things that you find interesting in other people's posts that you, you could kind of mirror that as well. Mix up your posts. The recommendation from one of the local LinkedIn trainers that I attended was, you know, Post about six times other people's content, then three posts of your own content, and then one post, if you're in sales, you know, you've got permission to sell. But if, you, if all you ever post is sell, 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 people will stop listening to you as well. And I see in the, uh, the chat, is LinkedIn also good for brand branding? Absolutely good for continuing your brand. Um, and you'll find people on LinkedIn that do a good job of that, that you can, that you can emulate. The best times to post are Thursdays. That seems to be the best day for whatever reason as far as uh, the performance of the post. But where you're going to get the most engagement, meaning people might like and share and comment, would be Wednesdays between 10 and 12 um, or Monday afternoons or Friday at 8 a.m. So Thursdays overall, everybody's kind of looking at LinkedIn. But if you really want to get some engagement where people respond, then you want to do that as well. So the final one is make it a habit. Extend five personal invitations to connect each day. And then when you're in LinkedIn, scan your homepage, like, comment, and share other people's posts. Show other people some love first, and they'll start to reciprocate as well. And then finally, Post consistently each week. If you can't do 10 posts a week, believe me, I can't either. Do what you can, but at least be consistent. Don't go dark with it. Now, if you need more info, just real quick, you've got this at the bottom of your handout, but I wanted to give you some examples. Debbie Weems is the local trainer in South Florida that I attended her session, and it was phenomenal. If you go to dwconsultingsolutions.com and sign up for her free newsletter, once a month, so she doesn't send you a ton of stuff, she does LinkedIn tips, and they're phenomenal. So, for example, this one on, there's a name pronunciation feature now in LinkedIn that I didn't even know was available, so I wouldn't have known that without Debbie's help. The second one that I found was on um, uh, YouTube, and that is Professor Heather Austin. So, if you're looking for a job and want to get some help with interview tips, job search, resume writing, or LinkedIn, the bomb. She's got all kinds of great stuff going on and tons of free stuff. I mean, look at this COVID-19 job search secrets, one hour and 12 minutes on YouTube. And I've watched several of her. She's very easy to listen to. I love her. And then finally, I mentioned Bryn Tillman. Bryn gives away so much valuable content. It's unbelievable. Go to socialsaleslink.com, register for free. You don't give a credit card. You don't do anything other than put your name and email address, and then you have access to her social sales link content. 
And there's, if you're in sales, she's got webinars that are phenomenal and master classes on how to, how to leverage LinkedIn for selling. So those hopefully, those three resources will help you find out more. But the bottom line is, if you want to fully leverage LinkedIn, you've got to optimize your profile, grow your connections and nurture your connections, post great content, and then make it a habit to stay out there. So with that, think about the Chunk It Down Challenge to get your profile done. And now I'll turn it over to Juliana for questions from the audience. Oh, thank you so much for that presentation, Kim. A mouthful, and you had a lot of great nuggets in there for your listeners. Now I want to scroll up to, I believe that's our Ernesto Gongora from the Bahamas. His question is, is premium worth the try? Uh, I've heard two different things. So Debbie Weems, for example, said you don't, and I agree, I don't use premium. She said you don't really need it for what you need. Um, it, they give you a free month if you want to try it, but you have to give them a credit card and then you have to remember to undo it or it'll automatically charge your card. Um, so Debbie Weems, who she is a LinkedIn expert, I am not, but she says eh, it's really not worth it for the average person. Bryn Tillman, who's in sales, says, yeah, it's worth it. Um, if you're talking about it from a job search standpoint, I would say no. You, As long as you optimize your profile, you should be fine. Perfect. And I'm not too sure if you can answer this one. Gino Jaramello, he asked if you know what happened to the find the nearby function on LinkedIn. I love that function and um, I saw that question come up and I saw that and thought, oh no, it went away. <laughs> so I didn't even know it went away because I haven't been to a networking event in a year because of co almost a year because of COVID. So um, I don't know if it's buried or what's mm -hmm. going on with that, but I'll see what I can find out. And if anybody else knows the answer to that about that you know, you used to be able to use your phone and you could connect instantly through the LinkedIn app. So I, that one, I don't have the answer to, but I'll see what I can find out while we're doing the next presentation. Uh, thanks, Kim. And another question came in from Sandra Huffman. How do I incorporate my side hustle into my professional LinkedIn page? That's a good one. Um, if your side hustle is... I think here's how I've seen it done and I've seen it done very tastefully. So let's say you work for ABC company. That's your current employer. That's in LinkedIn. You also put the name of your side hustle company in there as your current current employer. And then in some of your postings, you put that in there. You share, you share your value. You share valuable tips about your side hustle. And, you know, I truly believe that, you know, look at look at what I've done for Debbie and for Bren and for Heather telling all of you about them. You know, I'm, I'm doing free marketing for them because they've given me so much. So think about what you can give away of value and then use that as some of your posting and make sure you've got it listed as your current job as well, because you can have more than one job today. Oh, that's so very true. And you have some comments coming in. Excellent presentation, great information. I'm going to slide down to Dr. Sev. He says he has a premium to do classes only. Lots of great courses offered, which is free when you have premium. Okay, so that's a point as well. That's it's true. Yeah. To add to the, to the first point, and that's how he does it. And I have a question for you if we don't have any more questions coming in. Okay. Um, continue to drop your questions, guys. What got you interested in being an expert on LinkedIn? How did you, <laughs> how did you start off? Um, probably that class that I went to with Debbie Weems and it really inspired me. She, it was a hands-on class that I, I did when I started my business back in 2019, I went to a SCORE workshop. SCORE stands for the um, Society of uh, Retired Ex Executives, you know, so they do mentoring and they have these workshops and she just, she did this three hour class and it just kind of blew me away and I was like, wow, you know, I'm so glad that I know more about this and I'm going to go back and apply it and then when I started getting leads and I would say to people when they found me, how did you find me? Oh, I found you on LinkedIn. 
So I guess for me, it's kind of like a little side passion project. And then I went back to my leads group and I shared that information with them as well. And uh, so it's something that, that I've just been talking about here and there as, as needed. It's not something I, I typically will train on and get paid. This is, this is a side hustle, I guess. <laughs> wow, that's interesting. That's very good information. I have another question coming in from Gino. That's a great question. He says, how long did it take you to get over 2,000 connections? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I got a little crazy with it. And I would say, I think I really spent a lot of time on LinkedIn, like over a six-month period of time. And I was connecting with every person that I knew in the mortgage business, whether I knew them or not. I would just search and say, okay, who are all the loan officers that are in South Florida? And I wasn't trying to sell them anything. I just wanted to expand my network. And so I would put that in my personalized message. And honestly, I haven't nurtured those relationships as much as I should, but I also didn't pitch them in the beginning. So now that I have my own business and as I'm you know, slowly starting to post things, they're part of my first level connections and I can, I can have some benefit. So I was playing the long game with it. So I, I would say over a six or eight month period of time, about two years ago, is when I started building that. Oh, wow. And Ernesto Gongor, he's asking, is there such a thing as too many connections? You know, I've, I've heard it said both ways. Yeah, there can be, if you're not using them, they're not valuable. Um, I look at it like this, you know, being able to export those connections into Excel and then labeling them A-level connections, B-level, C-level, and then you just focus on the A's, um, I, I think you're, you're fine with that. So LinkedIn used to show, you know, now it just shows 500 plus connections. Used to, it would show, you know, 2,000 connections, 10,000, 10, I believe is the max. Bryn Tillman has over, I think 10, I think 10 is the max or something like that. But, um, you know, if you're start like she's, she's maxed out. So she has to be very careful about who she adds. I'm at 2000, you know, but I'm careful because I don't want a lot of connect and pitch. So, you know, it, it just depends on what your goal is with LinkedIn. Okay. And I see Kathy just mentioned Oh, can we get a copy of this training recording sent to our emails? Yes, I'm sure the vice president, um, the public relations manager, distinguished master Andre Kelly will provide us with that information uh, once this is done. No problem, Kathy. Okay, well, we have a few minutes left. I think they want to end the question and answer period. Oh, we have another one coming in from who's Jose. Great presentation. You mentioned that if you receive a connection and pitch, then you disconnect. The question is, when do you trim your connections or you don't recommend trimming your network? I've thought about it. I've thought about trimming my connections, um, but I haven't had time to do it. So it's, on, it's not the top of my priority list. Um, so, you know, as, as long as I feel like I'm, you know, the connections that I have aren't beating me to death trying to sell me or that kind of thing. I'm fine leaving them how they are. Um, so it, it really depends on how you're wanting to use LinkedIn. And I go back to the, if you can sort it with Excel, then you really don't have to worry about, you know, oh, have I got too many? And it sound, it looks like Gino said that you can have 30,000. So I don't know why 10 was sticking out, but thank you for that, Gino, that you can have a lot and Gino has 8,200. So that's amazing. Wow. wow, thank you so much for that for that response, Kim. Okay, any other questions? Any other questions, please feel free to drop them real quickly. But I think your presentation was lovely and I, I know for sure I appreciated it. Uh, if no further questions, oh, we have one more coming up from Kathy again. Can we do linked live on link posts? Um, I have not done it personally, but a couple of the webinars I watched talked about, yeah, you, you have to do it from the app. But like if you want to do, to do a LinkedIn live um, video, you could do that. And then there's also a way for you to send a video message to one of your connections. 
So there's some things with the LinkedIn video that I need to figure out how to use as well. And again, if you go to that uh, social sell sales link with Bren Tillman, yeah, social sales link, she's got some free webinars. I haven't even gotten into all of them yet that, that go into that information. Perfect. So I still got a lot to learn myself. Okay, and I think the and I think Toastmaster Derek is coming to run us off quickly. But if you can, for Martha Gomez, if you can send it in the chat, can you please write down the three web pages? Oh, send them in chat. Absolutely, mm -hmm. I will do that right now. All right. Well, it's that, that seems to end our question and answer period. Kim Beckett, and thank you so much for those handouts. I will now turn the session back over to our very good host, Toastmaster Derek Garcia Rule. Thank you very much, distinguished Toastmaster Clark. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you're like me who would have had a LinkedIn page, but did absolutely nothing with it. And here, distinguished Toastmaster Beckett came and give you, gave us insights on how to build our connection and made me feel shame that I did nothing with my LinkedIn page for the last six years that I've had it. So if you would join me and give her a wonderful virtual round of applause for her presentation tonight, we certainly learned a lot and we thank you very much. Now here's your part, our participants. Our chat monitor will post a, a evaluation link in the chat for you to give feedback on the presentation by Distinguished Toastmaster Kim Beckett. We have three minutes in order to fill this up, this, up, this, um, this evaluation form out during the time frame where we will have some nice mellow music to soothe you for the next three minutes. And then I will come back on with this robust voice to take you into the next part of our program. Thank you so very much, Andre, for that beautiful, soothing jazz music. Did it stir your soul like it did mine, fellow Toastmasters and most welcome guests? I hope it did. 
But I just want to give you just a little bit of note again. For our next session, there will be Q&A after the presentation portion. And at the end of the evening, for our very special guests, you have an opportunity to ask questions about the Toastmasters program. If you take note, our presenters tonight are Toastmasters. Toastmasters from different backgrounds, different professions. And like I said, Toastmasters is a, the universe of Toastmasters is very vast. So if you are not a Toastmaster, you are in the right place to learn about how to expand your universe. And Toastmasters is definitely the place for that. We are honored to welcome our second presenter tonight. And I would let him know that I piggyback off a song just to learn his name. And if anyone of you know me, I love to sing, but I cannot sing to save my life. But I'll sing anyway, because if it's nothing else, Toastmasters gives you confidence and courage in any arena. So here's my song. Aramillo, Aramillo Gino. Aramillo, Aramillo Gino. Aramillo Gino, Aramillo Gino. Aramillo, Aramillo Gino. And for those of you, my friends say, Derek, you have absolutely no shame, none whatsoever. So let's move this right along before I run a few of you off of the screen. Gino Jaramillo is a unique and has a unique and passion for serving others by sharing his 40 plus years of work experience in corporate America. He credits much of his success to his ability to connect with people on a very personal level. He was the director of aviation construction for a South Florida, for a, for a South Florida contractor. He created over $6 million in aviation construction projects, executed them flawlessly and profitably over a 25 year storied career. Gino is a, professional, is a professional speaker, a consultant specializing in construction and air engineering, a mentorship and network, networking expert. He has shared his expertise through coaching professionals and teaching students at, students at Florida International University and Miami-Dade College, where he is currently a professor. Mr. Aramidio earned his BS in electrical engineering at the University of South Florida and his MBA from the University of Miami. He is certainly a South Florida guy. He is a certified member of the Southeast chapter of the American Association Airport ex, ex, Executives. He is a lifetime member of the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers. He is on the board of directors of the Bricker Inst Education Institute. Both of these nonprofit organizations pro promote STEM in the Hispanic community. He is passionate about personal and professional development, training and sharing his expertise with the next generation of students, professionals, and leaders. Gino earned his DTM, which is Distinguished Toastmaster designation, the highest educational award available in the Toastmasters community in his first 39 months in the program. Gino is also a published author. His first book, his first book The Purple Squirrel Speaks, was launched on his 65th birthday. Gino, I am certain that when they put, when, when Andre puts you on the big screen, they would say, Gino, you're a liar. You do not need older than 25. His, 20, his 65th birthday, which was on June 20th, 2020. And it is available on Amazon in paperback and Kindle version as well. 
Ladies and gentlemen, friends, family, loved ones, please let us welcome Mr. Gino Jaramillo. Many of you found out during the pandemic that your company owns your job, but you own your career. And it's up to you to take care of your career. So I commend you all for being on this career development program tonight and the past night as well. You must take care of your career because no one else will. Now, what are soft skills? I'm gonna teach you about the top five soft skills that I've identified that will help you boost your career. They are personal attributes that enable someone to interact effectively and harmoniously with others. Now, why should you learn soft skills? Because strengthening soft skills is the best investment that you can make because they never go out of style. Here's my top five. Number one, public speaking. Oh, coincidence here. How many of you are afraid of public speaking? Well, there's a whole bunch of you out there. 74% of people suffer from speech anxiety, also known as glossophobia. But you can turn that anxiety into energy. Here's what this guy says. You know this guy? Just the third richest guy in America, Warren Buffett. He says, mastering the art of public speaking is the single greatest skill to boost your career. He goes on to say that you could earn up to 40% more in your lifetime. Where can you learn public speaking? For my money, Toastmasters International. It's probably the largest, oldest organization that you've never heard of. This year, it will turn 97 years old in October. 350,000 plus members worldwide organized by 16,000 clubs in 142 countries. You can find one near you. And today, almost all clubs are on Zoomy Zoomy. You can get on your computer and find a club almost anywhere in the world. I've done it. Now, how do you get good at public speaking? Do you know? Because we see that, that you're natural. You've been doing this since you like in first grade. No, 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 no. I joined Toastmasters coming up in March. It's gonna be seven years and it's practice. So the first level is you practice. And where do you practice? In front of a room of people. You can't practice in front of a camera, in front of your mirror, in front of your spouse or significant other. It has to be in front of a group of people, 10, 15, 20 people, where you have all those pairs of eyes staring at you, making you nervous. And then you do it again and do more practice. And then finally you get to lots of practice like Mr. Steve Jobs, my hero, rest in peace. He was a fine presenter. Another skill you could learn at Toastmasters is communication skills. Those that can communicate get chosen to present. Those that can present get noticed. And those that get noticed get promoted. You have to learn to communicate your speeches. Now here's a little skill that you may not think you need, but we practice it at Toastmasters, it's called table topics and it's known as impromptu speaking. You have to keep calm and think on your feet to answer a question at random for at least one minute. Where do you think you might use this skill? Hey, how about an interview? How about when you go meet your boss for that impromptu meeting and you have no idea what he's going to ask you? You can practice that at Toastmasters. Now, here's one of the greatest things that our founder, Ralph Smedley, created as part of the Toastmasters program. It's called feedback. And it comes in the form of a written and a verbal evaluation after your speech. Isn't that sweet? So people will tell you how to improve. You need other people to improve. You need feedback. And that's where you get it at Toastmasters. Here's a part that I love about Toastmasters, stories. We are storytellers. That's what Toastmasters do. That's what public speakers do. 
and it's that great content. I've learned everything from yoga to fishing to wine to travel, so many different stories. And you get to meet people, you get to hear their stories, and often they are quite inspirational. Now, here's my top Toastmaster tips. Number one, you must find a club that is convenient to both your location and your time. Location is not so big these days because most clubs are meeting online. So pick a convenient time. You don't want to do a time where you're at home running around or maybe it's lunchtime, it's good for you. Maybe early morning is good for you. And there will be a club that meets at the time that you need. You can visit as many clubs as you want, as many times as you want. And guess what? For free. The next one is you decide on a club based on how you feel, the vibe. How do the people there make you feel welcome? And then commit. You must commit to going every week or every two weeks, depending on how often the club meets. Toastmasters is like the public speaking gym. I know a lot of you made New Year's resolutions right now and promised yourself that you're gonna get that gym membership and you're going to go every day, but you didn't, did you? So you have to make a commitment. If you go to the, to the public speaking gym, you'll get better. And I myself find that if I don't go to Toastmasters and miss a meeting or two, I get rusty. My next one is, you will be either assigned a mentor or you can pick a mentor. And it's very important. That's one of my other top five soft skills. My next soft skill, number two, is leadership. There's a lot of self-proclaimed leaders everywhere in industry, in business, in the United States government. But there's a general lack of leadership. Now, what is leadership? There's only three things happen naturally in organizations, friction, confusion, and underperformance. Everything else requires leadership. This was said by Peter Drucker, famous business author in the 70s. What's the purpose of being a leader? It's to serve others. Our founding fathers of the United States used to sign their letters at your service. We must serve others. Here's what Dr. Martin Luther King, who we just celebrated his day, said, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? And John Maxwell says, leadership is not about titles, positions, or flow charts. And I think there he meant organizational charts. It's about one life influencing another in a good way. Here's what Jack Welch, former GE, CEO said, before you are a leader, success is all about growing yourself. When you become a leader, success is about growing others. Even if you're not a leader by birth, you, become, you can become a leader by design. You can learn it. It is a learned skill. A true leader does not create followers. They create more leaders. And that's my mission now in the world to create more benevolent leaders. When I was a yoga instructor for five years at LA Fitness, I didn't go there to create more students. I went there to create more yoga teachers. Here's what my idol Steve Jobs says. Management is about persuading people to do things they do not want to do. While leadership is about inspiring people to do things they never could, they never thought they could. Imagine the products this man has been in the lead of, the iPod, the iPhone, the iMac, tremendous products, all created by inspired people. Here's my leadership tips. My first principle of leadership is you have to figure it out for yourself. I led a 35 person team when I built those, correction to Derek, it's $600 million of work at MIA. They would come to me, you know, you know, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? We don't know what to do. Don't worry about it. We're going to figure it out. So you have to figure it out as a leader. Get their input too, get their ideas. Now, if you wait 
for someone else to provide orders, directions, or solutions, then you're a follower. You're not a leader. Here's my next tip. Help. What is help? Any action that assists in the attainment of the goal or destination of the person or the team. And a leader provides help to the group members to attain the goal. But here's the best part. A leader asks for help from the appropriate peers or experts when they become thwarted in the attainment of the goal or destination. I'm going through a very complex claim right now on a Hurricane Irma loss, and I had to depend on experts. I have a window expert, I have a stucco expert, and I have a roofing expert. Don't be afraid to ask experts. Here's one of the benefits of Toastmasters is mentorship. And here's what I say about mentorship. First of all, let's define it. What is a, what is a mentor? It's an experienced and trusted advisor. It's a guide. And let me make the distinction right here. How many of you have ever bought a ticket to go somewhere on an airplane from a travel agent? All he does is say, give me the money. Here's the ticket. But what does the travel guide do? The travel guide takes you by the hand and says, listen, this is the best hotel to stay at, eat at these restaurants, go to these attractions at this time or that time, and they lead you along, they show you the ropes. One of my best stories, I've mentored 10 different people in Toastmasters to become a distinguished Toastmaster, but my very first one was a gal named Espy. She came to me and said, Gino, I'm finishing my master's, I'm starting a new business, I need to get this DTM thing behind me. Can you coach me? I said, sure. We came up with a playbook. Remember that Derek said that I did my DTM in my first 39 months as a member? I coached her to become a DTM in 29 months. You see the value? The other names given to mentors is guru, a counselor, a consultant, and that's my official title these days. I'm a construction consultant. Now, why should you have a mentor? because one good mentor could be more informative than a college education. I'm not telling you not to get a college education. I'm just saying it's more informative and more valuable than a decade's worth of income. Here's what John Maxwell says. After you've been mentored, true success comes only when every generation continues to develop the next. And that's my mission today. I changed the initials of DTM, Distinguished Toastmaster, to devoted to mentoring. And that's what I do now to my students, to my fellow Toastmasters, and to all the business people that I consult. Now, who could be your mentor? It's someone you respect and admire. Someone that acts like you desire. You've been watching them. Someone that's in the position that you want. Look for patterns of interest, however, uh, I'm sorry, Re do research their career history to see if it's similar to yours and you want to be in their position. However, do not do this, which is nothing turns off a person more than a blatant request for mentorship. So you come, please, 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 please be my mentor. No, get to know the person. Ask them for a cup of coffee or go have some tea. Meet them after a meeting. Ask them some questions and develop that relationship. Now there's different types of programs that are called mentor protege programs. Does your company have one? If it does, you should take advantage of it. If it doesn't, call me and I'll create one for you. Look at this little stat. Is this a coincidence? No, 71% of Fortune 100 companies have a mentor protege program. Hey, and guess what? There's an app for that. Kim talked about LinkedIn. I'll talk a little bit about it too. LinkedIn has an app for mentoring. And your college, your university that you went to, they have a mentor protege program. There's two kinds of mentor protege relationships. One is formal, and that comes from corporate America. They love assigning you your mentee or your, pro, your, your, your mentor and Keep track of it. We love metrics and results. So the, here's a form and you got to, how often are you meeting? When are you meeting? How long are you meeting? What are your goals? What are you going to talk about? And then you got to turn it in. That's formal, which is fine. And then you have informal. 
Informal is when you build that relationship that I spoke about. I have several people that I've known, the division E director, I've known her for 20 plus years. She worked for me as my administrative assistant many years ago. And I brought her along all this time. We've remained friends. She lives in the same city that I live. And I dragged her into Toastmasters. And then she became an officer at the club and she was an area director. And now she's our division E director. That's a long time relationship. And I have several others, but I'm gonna speed it up. Now networking, that's my third top skill or fourth rather. And here's what I have to say about networking. It's a little bit like a, just a quick overview. Be yourself, be authentic. Don't try to be somebody else that you're not because people will see right through you. They'll know. Be a giver. Don't ask for stuff. Be giving. Do ask questions and do pay attention. So I put on here, listen actively. What does that mean? When you go talk to somebody, look them in the eyes. Square your shoulders. Point your feet at them. Don't be looking at your phone. Listen attentively and actively. And then do follow up. My favorite follow up is I don't ask for a card. I wait for them to ask me and then I'll present my card and then I'm, I might ask them for the card. I'll get their card. I'll look them up on LinkedIn. You can also use a program called Evernote where you scan the card and it puts all that information into your phone and you can send them a request through LinkedIn and it sends them your LinkedIn profile as well in an email. Pretty cool, huh? Now, Kim talked a lot about LinkedIn. How many connections do you have now? If you're under 500 plus, that doesn't look good. Kim said she's got 2000, I have 8200. And how complete is your profile? There's places where LinkedIn tells you how complete your profile is. It'll give you a percentage. And now here's mine. You want to connect with me right now? You want more connections? Here, take your iPhone out or whatever phone, turn on your camera, point it at the screen, and it will get to me, and I answer all requests. Cool? Here's my top networking tips. Number one, be on time, especially for you that are introverted and you're shy. Get there before everybody gets there. On time means about five minutes early. Get the lay of the land. Look at how the room is. Pick a spot where you're going to stand. Be comfortable. Next, attitude is everything. You ever ask somebody how they're doing? Nah, nah I feel like, I feel bad. My dog got ran over. My pickup truck is not working. And my girlfriend left me. No, you don't want to talk to that person. Hey, Gino, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. How are you? And then do talk to strangers. That's the whole point of networking. You're not there to talk with your little clique or with the people from your job or people you know or friends. Talk to strangers. This is what it's all about. And do spend time with them. Don't try to bounce around and give your card and collect a whole bunch of cards. Really get to know somebody. And do be present. This is what I talk about, the actively listening. Get off your phone. Don't stare off into the sunset. Be attentive, be present. And my last one, I already mentioned it, be yourself, be authentic. People will notice if you're inauthentic. And my last top five soft skill is emotional intelligence. Back in the day, it used to be that whoever had the highest IQ, that was the person that was promoted. These days, it's quite different. And I joke around that the C students are now the bosses of the A students. Emotional intelligence, what is it? It's five, it's four things. Perceiving emotions, understanding emotions, managing emotions, using emotions in you and in others. Here it is. Emotional intelligence is an individual's ability to understand and use emotion in themselves and in others. Now, why should you care about developing these EI skills? Because being able to understand emotions is fundamental to understanding what it is that will make you more high functioning and lead you to flourish. We are not robots. We are human beings full of emotions. We're an emotional machine. We're not a very rational machine at times. 
And here's my best article that I ever read on emotional intelligence. There's a link right there. Hopefully the leadership will share this with you and you can click on that and go to that site. Now here are the basic emotions. They are anger. You know what that is. There's things that make you mad. There's disgust. You just feel disgusted when someone does something. And then there's fear. Now realize that there's only two fears that we're born with. One is the fear of falling. You ever try to hand a baby to someone else and the baby kind of jerks down when, when he doesn't feel like he's, he's being held? And then the other one is the fear of loud noises. You can see a baby jump when they hear a loud noise. Every other fear is learned or instilled in you. Happiness, that's a really good one. I try to be happy most of the time. And then the opposite is sadness. You might feel sad. And then there's contempt. This is when that other person that you know cheated, got ahead, and they got that promotion or that raise and you didn't, you're going to feel contempt. And then there's surprise. Some people like surprises. I like surprises. I like surprise birthday parties. I like surprise parties. But what I don't like is surprises at work. And I don't like surprising my owners. I upfront with them and I tell them whenever there's a problem. Now here are the emotions you might feel at work. These are negative emotions that you might feel at work. There's frustration and irritation. How many of you are feeling that right now? Get to the bottom of that. Why are you feeling that way? There might be worry or nervousness. Worry is produced by not living in the moment. It's by thinking about the future and playing movies in your head that may never come to fruition. And then you get nervous. There's anger and aggravation. Dislike. How many of you have that worker that has that habit that you don't like where they, they take off their shoes or, or they raid the refrigerator, they eat your lunch. And then there's disappointment and unhappiness. Obviously, if you don't get that raise, you don't get that promotion, you're going to be disappointed. Now, here's my top 10 strategies to deal with emotions. The first one, men, you're going to love this. It's called compartmentalization. That's where, you know how us men we are. We watch a football game. That's what we're doing. We're not needling. We're not doing anything else. We're watching a football game. But women, you like everything to be interrelated, interconnected. And I'm not stereotyping here, but that's just what I've found over my years. So keep your negative emotions from home from affecting your work. Keep those things at home. Don't come and bring your latest fight with your spouse or your children to work. The next one is deep breathing and relaxation techniques. How many times have you been upset and people come up to you and they say, hey, hey, just breathe, just breathe. So let's do that for a moment right now. Let's take a big breath through our nose. Inhale, lift your shoulders up, try to touch your shoulders and blast it out through your mouth. One more time, inhale through your nose, lift your shoulders and blast it out. Don't you feel good already? Now here's the 10 second rule. This is where you count to 10 before you react before you send that email, before you blurt out something that you shouldn't be saying. And here, here's how it works for me. I live in a gated community and when I get to my gate and, and the gate doesn't open because someone's in front of me and they don't have their pass or some other issue, I start counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And I blast the horn. But at least I tried to count to 10. The next one is clarify your instructions to others or instructions that you receive. This goes to communication. And who does this best? Restaurants. I'm not a big Burger King, McDonald's, Wendy's, all those fast food places, but what do they do? You tell them the order and they read it back to you. Same as you go to a restaurant. If you want your order to be correct, make sure your waiter tells you the order. Clarity will remove any negative emotions. Blast your anger through exercise. My exercise routine now, I used to be a yoga instructor, is to walk. 
And every day I take a 45 minute walk around my beautiful neighborhood full of lakes and palms. And it really blasts it out of me. Not that I get angry, but I just feel so much better. Never reply or make a decision when you're angry. You need to cool off. And the reply comes in this form. Some of you might get that email at four o'clock in the afternoon on a Friday. And man, that email made you mad. And you want to answer right away with every point with all your emotion. Go ahead and write that. But don't hit send. Wait till you sleep on it over the weekend. Come in Monday morning. Reread it. Remove all the emotion and just give the facts and give a competent confident reply. Know your triggers. What sets you off? My wife knows every one of my triggers. But guess Brad. what? I know every one of hers. Do be respectful. There's a lack of respect in the world today. So be respectful so you receive respect. And the, be the bigger person and do apologize if you do have that angry emotional outburst. And last, never bring your negative emotions from work home. Questions, please. It is in the question period that the most learning happens. Take it away, chat monitor, Juliana. Oh, thank you so much, Gino. I enjoyed your presentation just now. Now I can all day, I can eat, sleep, and drink it. So if no one has a question, I will just engage in conversation in conversation with you for a moment. And I'm watching the chat as well, audience. So please feel free to drop your questions here in the chat. I'm watching, I'm watching. So Gino, you said you're a distinguished Toastmaster. Which role in the program you enjoyed the most and or which connected you I know you have a president's role. Maybe you were area director at one point, vice president of education, membership. Which one of those do you, in your opinion, with your career? Or was a combination? Well, definitely a combination, but that's the cop out. I'll give you the, the role. It is president. And here's why. It is a commitment because every week you commit to coming to that meeting to preside over that meeting. The president is the one that's introduced by the sergeant at arms. It's the first one that comes up and speaks. It's the person that welcomes the guests. And then at the end of the meeting, asks the guests for their impression of the meeting. It's a commitment. And that's why I love that role so much. Oh, excellent. And I have another question for you. Were you ever nervous with your impromptu speaking for table topics? I know that's a, a skill that we and what we encourage a lot of gas non toastmasters even toastmasters now you know to strengthen were you were you ever afraid of table topics or you were just a natural at it oh goodness table topics made me as nervous as a cup of coffee i had no idea what to do and then you get the you know the green doesn't come up and then people are saying keep going keep going keep, and you don't know what to say you didn't know the segue technique and it was very nerve wracking, but I learned how to get those little butterflies to fly in formation. That's great. And we have a question coming in from Crystal Starro. So she states, how do you deal with emotions when meeting with someone in person? Do you ask to step away to cool down? Do you do the 10 second rule? Do you take deep breaths? Any advice for in the moment emotions handling would be great. Yeah, in the moment, it depends on where you are. If you are in a group setting, definitely hold it back because you praise publicly, reprimand privately. So when you get that person in a private setting, now you can approach them and talk to them and express your feelings and find out what their feelings were. So you do it privately. Don't ever do it in a group setting, at a meeting, or in a, in a big group. Oh, okay. Thank you so much for that question, Gino. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that, that's a help to you, Crystal. We, 
Make sure I send you questions, guys, because I can talk here all day, but I know I only have about six more minutes. So Masters Clubs are you a part of now? Currently, I am only with Doral Toastmasters, but I've been a member of South Dade, The Landing, at Miami Advanced. Uh, I've been a member of several clubs, but right now I'm just dedicated to Doral Toastmasters because we're trying to get our membership growing and back up to the how it was pre-pandemic. Mm -hmm. Okay, understood. I have a question back on that, but I see Kathy just posed something in the chat. How about time management? She gets overwhelmed with so much things. What do you recommend? Oh my goodness, that is a completely another subject of another seminar. So we can have that seminar later, but basically time management, I develop a tool called Live Your Life Calendar. And it's a simple spreadsheet, color-coded. I put the date, the time, what I'm doing, what city and what venue, and I color-coded and I look at all that. And I'm constantly shuffling moving around, prioritizing. So you have to prioritize is the key thing. What is the most important thing that you have to do right now? Not everything's an emergency. Not everything's urgent. Yeah, there could be urgent. You just sliced your, your wrist. You need to take care of that urgently. But most things are not as urgent as you think and you can prioritize and that should remove some of the stress okay and we also have a question coming in from okay i think i saw eric what's the difference between a mentor and a coach wow i i had that as one of the slides but because of time i passed on it a coach is somebody that prepares you for one event so think of aaron Rodgers right now he's going to play in the nfc championship his coach is preparing them for that game. A mentor is, so a coach talks to you. A mentor is someone that talks with you and gets your input to figure out a game plan, to figure out what is it that you wanna do. It's much longer term. It goes several projects or several days. That's the difference between coach and mentor. Mm -hmm. I, and I think you're spot on with that, you know. And Kathy asks, are you in Zoom in Doral or in person? We are no longer in Zoomy Zoomy. We are live at Urbe University, right behind Ikea, kind of close to Kaiser where we had our TLIs. So we are live since October and it's been going great. We have all the protocols of COVID and it's been great. No one's gotten sick and we have really good attendance and have a lot of fun. Wow. Wow, I can't, I can't wait to meet in person with my clubs. So I know you mentioned you were a part of several Toastmasters clubs, Gino. Tell yes. me something. Do you, did you recognize a culture different with all of those clubs you were in? Because I know the clubs that I'm a part of, more than one, there's a culture difference. Tell us what, you know, what your experience is and how did that better you for, let's say, speaking to people or, you know, on the job? How did that strengthen your connection with, with um, the human race? Very insightful of you to note that there are differences and they vary greatly. And it's all based on people. Who are the people in the club? You know, if you go to Brickell, you're gonna find all the business type people. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you go to South Dade, it's a little more relaxed. What's cool about South Dade is people came all the time and, and they're having their club contest next week and it is live. So there's a different vibe. There's a different atmosphere per club. And then you see how clubs do things differently. You know, mm -hmm. how do they do the odd counting? How do they do the grammarian? What is their procedure? What's their order? Most meetings, they're, they're an hour. They follow the Toastmasters format, but there's little nuances, little differences, and you can carry those little differences to help other clubs improve or carry the ones from the other clubs you've been to help that club improve. And I do that all the time as area director right now. I have six clubs under my charge. Wow. 
Wow, wow, your shoulders must be heavy with all of those clubs. We have, we have a question coming in from Derek again. Now, who benefits more from the mentor mentor relationship? Like this is the last question because I see 840 is right there. Go ahead. Yeah, that's a really tough one. I think they both benefit. I've had mentees for years. And for instance, I, I'm technologue. I'm not so technologically challenged. I'm an electrical engineer. I, I know my way around computers and phones, but this next generation of leaders is way more computer savvy and telephone savvy and they teach me things. So I find that they teach me things and I teach the, them things more about leadership and, and the soft skills because the hard skills you, you can learn. You can go on YouTube, you can take classes. So I think it's a two-way street. Obviously the mentor has more knowledge and passes on more information, but the mentor can learn as well. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Gino, for that response. And I will wrap it up right now for your question and answer period. I know we had a section earlier with Kim Beckett based on LinkedIn. We will provide that answer shortly. Let's see if I can find the notes very quickly. Oh, with virtual events. Let's see if I can find the question first. Sorry, did, sorry, Kim. Okay, we'll post it back in the chat. Or oh, Kim, can you shoot me the what the question was again very quickly before I exit stage? I did. I sent it to you privately. Okay. Just now. I know you had a lot of things in chat to look at. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to send out a new handout link to you, uh, a Google Drive doc instead. And, oh, that was a question based on, oh, find you nearby option, right? I think so. So per LinkedIn with virtual events increasing and importance and face-to-face -face interaction reducing drastically, we've made the decision to temporarily disconnect the find nearby feature for the latest and upcoming versions of the LinkedIn mobile app. We hope to revisit once face-to-face -face interactions can be carried on safely across the world. And let me drop very quickly. I know some of you had a problem with the link earlier with the handout for Kim Beckett. Here is a new link for you to download. And well, that's all from me, Kim, Gino, I enjoyed your question and answer period. And I hope all of those in the line enjoyed as well. Thank you Take very it away. much. Our chat monitor, Juliana Clark. And thank you very much, Gino, for sharing that those soft skills that are so important. Ladies and gentlemen, please let's give Gino a round of applause for that presentation this evening. You have an opportunity to share your feedback as a link will be posted in the chat once again for you to give your evaluation on Gino's presentation tonight. I certainly understand and see why he still looks 25 at the age of 65. He was a yoga instructor. Gino, get back in the game. This young old frame of mind needs some work. Thank you very much. So once again, Soft music will be played as you fill out those, those forms. We have three minutes on the clock for that. And then we will move quickly into our wrap up.
All right, as you continue to fill out those forms, we'd just like to take this opportunity to thank those who would have participated. And before I get to calling off the names, fellow Toastmasters and especially our guests, if nothing else, these two nights have helped us to understand the importance of expanding our capacity. If you are a non-Toastmaster, I say to you, if you want to expand your capacity for growth, for development, for opportunities that will come along, Toastmasters is the place for you. So special thanks goes out to our distinguished Toastmaster, uh, Gino Aramillo for his presentation tonight, distinguished Toastmaster Kim Beckett, Toastmaster Derek garcia Roll, distinguished Toastmaster Juliana Clark, Toastmaster Jacolia Barnett, Distinguished Toastmaster Price Polonese, Distinguished Toastmaster Dora Kane, Distinguished Toastmaster Lois Margolin, Distinguished Toastmaster Shakira Taylor, and last but not least, Distinguished Toastmaster Andre Kelly. Jacolia, you and I, we need to finish and hurry up get our DTM so that we can level up just a, a little higher. For our guests, there, if you have questions, there will, we'll have, you'll have an opportunity to find out more about Toastmasters in another few minutes. We may have a breakout room for you to go to, to learn more about the Toastmasters program and how Toastmasters can help you. Again, expand your capacity. The chance and the time is now. Take full advantage of this opportunity that is given to you. It is so fitting that the last two Toastmasters meeting I would have attended last night and partly the night before I came on, the theme had to do with time. Yesterday's theme was TikTok, the clock won't stop. And tonight's theme was time and tide waits for no man. Time will not wait on you to seize this opportunity. Seize the time and take advantage of the opportunity. I thank you so very much. And please stay tuned and listen out for other educational programs that will be presented for, um, from District 47 throughout the year. Again, thank you so very much. We will end formally in a few seconds. We can hang around and ask questions here or be placed into